Hello and welcome again to the International Soccer Preview by Soccer Files Canada. Uh, I'm Kevin. And I'm Connor. And we are continuing our look at CONCACAF World Cup 2022 qualification. So here we will be previewing uh, all eight teams in separate podcasts, two for each team actually. Uh, this first will focus on the team, its history and prospects uh, with a special emphasis on qualifying history. And in a separate podcast, we will look at the players, uh, which we've organized position, or sorry, by position, um, although somewhat artificially, and we'll look at the main candidates for each position. That's right. And we're also considering a, an update podcast about halfway through this uh, qualification set because it's a long one. And uh, keep your eye out for that around Christmas time. Uh, okay, we'll uh, divide this discussion into a few parts. So uh, we will start with just an introduction of the country and then uh, take a look at the soccer history of the country, uh, including the World Cup with an emphasis on qualifying this time and also uh, the regional cup. And in the case of Jamaica, there's also a local uh, cup, which we'll take a quick look at. Uh, and then we'll move on to the 2022 World Cup qualifying uh, with a look at their uh, uh, game so far, which is none for Jamaica, uh, their final round schedule and a few of their key players, particularly scorers. And finally, we'll take a look at their prospects uh, and look at how they're ranked, their head-to-head -head record with other teams, and then a bit of a discussion about how we think they're going to finish up. So, tell us a little bit about Jamaica. All right, Jamaica, an island country in the Caribbean. Uh, they're the smallest uh, country competing uh, in this OCA, or the octagon. Um, they're, only, they're about half the size in terms of area as the next smallest country, El Salvador. And they're also the smallest country in terms of population. Uh, 2.9 million people, um, and it's just over a million less than the next smallest country, Panama. Right, so that considered, uh, they do quite well as a soccer country. And uh, let's move on to talk about their uh, World Cup history. But before we begin, do we have a nickname for these guys? That's right. They have one of the best nicknames in football, in my opinion. The Reggae Boys. <laughs> Spelled with a Z, too. That's a, a, an even better touch. <laughs> okay, well, uh, they first entered the World Cup in 1966. And their participation was a bit patchy until 1990, uh, but from then they've entered every time. Uh, they first entered the larger regional cup uh, slightly earlier than that in 1963. Uh, but as with the World Cup, they were inconsistently uh, participating until 1989. Uh, and then they've entered everyone since then. They're one of the top teams in the Caribbean zone. Uh, they entered all tournaments from, from their local um, competition, which we'll touch on later, uh, to its end in 2017. So uh, the Caribbean Cup is history now. In terms of achievement, an overview of their achievements, uh, their best achievement was reaching the World Cup in 1998. Uh, they've never won the regional title, but they came second recently uh, in both 2015 and 2017. And in their Caribbean zone, uh, they won the title five out of the 19 editions. So let's turn to the uh, World Cup and see how they've, how they've done in the actual cup. Yeah, their, their patchy involvement in, in World Cup play includes two withdrawals in 1974 and 1986, uh, which were actually withdrawals from the CONCACAF Championship tournaments, which acted as a qualifier for the World Cup in that period. Um, though they, they've reached the Cup only once, that was the World Cup in 1998 in France, where they lost to Croatia and Argentina, but beat Japan to finish third in the group stage. Third in the group stage. Okay, well, let's take a look at their World Cup qualifying as my telephone rings and I ignore it. Uh, okay, well, their first entry, that'll stop soon. Their first entry was in 1966, where they passed the first round over Netherlands, Antilles, and Cuba. Uh, there they earned only a draw on the road in the Netherlands, Antilles, but uh, they won both games at home, which was enough to win the group. 
they were no match for Mexico and Costa Rica, though, in the next round, losing heavily uh, 7-0 and 8-0 on the road. But they did earn a draw with Costa Rica at home. Uh, the next tournament in 1970 saw them losing all games to Costa Rica and Honduras. And that was partially because, for some reason, they played uh, their home games uh, away. So they were all away games. Uh, their participation staggered a little bit after that, withdrawing in 1974 and 1986, and not even entering it in 1982. Their only entry in 1978 consisted of two losses to Cuba. So that was basically uh, two games over a 12-year period. They came back in 1990 with a win, uh, winning a set over Puerto Rico, but then losing to the USA, uh, although they did draw at home where they're quite strong. Uh, it hardly seemed that this team would reach the World Cup just eight years later. Even in 1994, where, where after winning sets over Puerto Rico and then Trinidad and Tobago, they were fairly weak in the semi-final round and proved no match for El Salvador and Canada. Uh, they finished in that four-team group only ahead of Bermuda. So their qualification in 1998 was a bit of a surprise. Uh, after winning sets over Suriname and Barbados, they finished first in the semi-final round, ahead of Mexico and on Honduras. Sorry, I must must be excited by that news. Ahead of Mexico and on Honduras, uh, they won all home games. In the final round, they were winless on the road, but they did earn three draws. They were undefeated at home, earning draws with Mexico and USA, who nevertheless finished ahead of them. So it was third place ahead of Costa Rica, El Salvador, and Canada, and that proved enough to reach the cup in 1998. Uh, they reached the final round in the following edition. Uh, 2002 saw them finish behind Honduras, but ahead of El Salvador in the semi-final round. But they came fifth of sixth in the final round and quite far behind for fourth place Honduras. In the following two editions, they failed to reach the final round, falling to the USA and Panama in 2006, and then to Honduras and Mexico in 2010. They finished uh, ahead of El Salvador and Canada, respectively. But uh, let's turn to a closer look at their last two campaigns, keeping in mind that uh, reaching the final round is probably the realistic goal for Jamaica. All right, so in 2014, uh, they received a buy in round one and actually also received a buy in round two as they were one of the top six ranked teams in the region. Um, so the round they entered was a four team group stage. Um, they won all their games at home, including over the United States, um, but only managed a single road on the draw uh, or single draw on the road that coming in Antigua, Antigua and Barbuda. Uh, they finished tied with Guatemala, but a head on goal difference. When they advanced to the Hex, they won no games uh, in that final round, but they did act as a spoiler with some significant draws, uh, most notably uh, in Mexico in their first game. Um, they did well to reach the final round, but it, it was a bit of an easy run to get there. Um, over the course of their nine road games in World Cup qualifying, they only scored one goal. Wow. Um, so that kind of summed up a uh, bit of their weakness away from home. All right, let's see if they did any better in 2018. So yes, Jamaica is one of the top eight ranked teams in the region uh, in 2018. Um, they were able to enter qualifying in round three. Um, there they struggled uh, with Nicaragua in a two-legged playoff, uh, losing 3-2 in the first game at home, but coming back to win 2-0 in the second leg, uh, overcoming a red card in the second half and then relying on a late goal. Uh, for the aggregate victory. This brought them to the round four group stage where they disappointingly managed only an away win in Haiti and a home draw with Costa Rica. They lost both matches to Panama and finished last behind Haiti, tied on points but behind on goal difference. Right, so they didn't reach the final round there. Uh, okay, now let's turn our attention to the uh, regional competition. Sorry, I just got to find my spot here. And um, 
that was known as the CONCACAF Championship until 1989 and then the Gold Cup from 1991. So their 1998 World Cup success was paralleled in the regional competition uh, with a fourth place finish in 1998. But they generally have done better in this tournament than in World Cup qualifying. Uh, 1993 saw them finish third and they have uh, qualified for about half of the CONCACAF Cups. Uh, they passed the group stage in more than half of those times. In recent times, they've qualified even more often, missing only two editions from 2003 until the present. And even 2003 was unfortunate, uh, where they finished in qualifying at the bottom of a three-way tie. Uh, there is no, no excuse, however, for their ghastly qualifying performance in 2013, where they got knocked out of the Caribbean Cup, that's the qualifying tournament, uh, at the group stage. We'll see uh, a bit later that they often win that cup, so getting knocked out of the group stage was a bit of a disgrace. Uh, their best result since 1998 has been quarterfinal finishes, or had been quarterfinal finishes, until they earned impressive uh, second place finishes in both 2015 and 2017, uh, losing to the USA on both occasions. Uh, with the tournament now expanded to 16 teams as of 2019, uh, it would be a pretty disappointing year for them to miss a Gold Cup now. And let's take a look uh, at how they've done recently and see if they kept up with those two second place finishes. Yeah, so for the 2019 Gold Cup, um, qualification was changed to CONCACAF Nations League play, so the Caribbean Cup is no more. Um, in the 2018-19 placement round, they won three of their four games, uh, losing their last to El Salvador. But this gave them an eighth-place finish in a super table of 34 teams, uh, which was good enough to reach the 2019 Gold Cup. Once there, they won their uh, group ahead of Curaçao, El Salvador, and Honduras. Uh, they reached the semifinals, uh, beating Panama, but losing to the United States. However, it did secure a third straight top four finish for them. Yeah, not bad. Uh, let's go to 2021. So they qualified for the 2021 Gold Cup uh, by winning their Nations League B group ahead of Guyana, Antigua and Barbuda and Aruba, uh, suffering only a draw with second place Guyana in their final game. So pretty comfortable. At the tournament, uh, they finished second behind Costa Rica in the group stage, um, but ahead of Suriname and Guadeloupe, uh, beating them both. However, for a fourth straight time, their tournament was ended by the United States, uh, who beat them 1-0 at the quarterfinal stage, so getting knocked out a little bit earlier than they had in their previous tournaments. Yeah, that's, uh, that's right. Okay, we're just going to take a quick look at the uh, Caribbean region. Uh, this cup is no longer. It was a qualifier for the uh, Gold Cup uh, right from its beginning until 2017. Now the CONCACAF Nations League has taken over as the qualifier. But you can see that they're certainly one of the uh, stronger teams in the region. Uh, but pretty hot and cold. Uh, they, they won it uh, five times, no, six times. Um, six out of, I believe it's 17 editions. Uh, anyway, the, uh, they and Trinidad and Tobago usually won the competition. But you can see they had some uh, pretty poor performances, uh, not even qualifying in 1994 and 2007, and getting knocked out in the group stage several times. I kind of mocked them for that in 2012. That was a pretty poor result, uh, given that they had won in the surrounding uh, th three of the surrounding cups. But uh, in fact, getting knocked out at the group stage is, is not that uncommon. Anyway, that's all behind us now because we have the uh, CONCACAF qualifying. And let us go back to the World Cup and take a look at their uh, previous qualifying. How did they get to this final round, Connor? Well, they got there, but with a bye. Um, they haven't had to play any qualification games so far. Um, they were handed a bye to the final round, the Octagon, um, by dint of being ranked in the top five CONCACAF teams according um, to the July 2020 FIFA ranking. So 
Um, it's been a little bit of a matter of controversy uh, in CONCACAF that some teams just got kind of dropped right into the final stage, um, which hasn't typically been the case, but their qualification uh, will start in September. Um, so, yes, no games played so far. Yeah, I mean, especially as Canadians, where there was a risk that uh, we weren't going to make this round. Because when they decided on those uh, five teams that would be put in uh, based on FIFA rankings, that only what left one spot for the rest of, of CONCACAF, for all the other teams in CONCACAF, which seemed decidedly unfair, especially in the case of Jamaica, uh, their two Gold Cup second place finishes seems to justify it, but the fact that they didn't reach the semi-final round, or sorry, the final round in 2014, made it seem uh, quite unfair. So we were very happy when they kind of reorganized the qualification to make it more fair, which they basically did by expanding it. Yeah, I mean, even still, uh, Jamaica is kind of lucky to be there. Uh, um, uh, without having to go through qualifications. Uh, but let's see what they're up against here. Uh, this is their final round schedule that we're showing on the graphic. And uh, for listeners, we'll basically just comment on it. Is there anything that stands out to you there, Connor? Well, you mentioned earlier Jamaica are, are a pretty strong team at home. Um, but uh, five of their first seven games are on the road. Um, so that's a very, very difficult and perhaps a bit of an unlucky start for them. Um, and then they finish up with the run of home games. So I think for them, they, they will have to make sure that they're, they're competitive in the first half of qualifying when they're on the road, pick up a few points here and there. And then, you know, if they're kind of in with the shout, they may have a chance to improve in the second half when they have five of seven games at home. Yeah, kind of uh, the opposite of El Salvador. They may seem to be kind of uh, falling out a bit uh, towards the middle, uh, playing Mexico, Costa Rica, and USA away in three of their first four games. Um, but yeah, there's a run of uh, three home games there in, in January, all actually, uh, no, not in the same period, but a run of three games in January at home actually against those same three teams um, that, that might help them out. But a, a fairly gentle schedule at the end for the last four games uh, could kind of see them come back into the picture. Yeah. All right. Well, let's move on to talk about some of the players uh, on the team. And we kind of rotate this around uh, the scorers, but... Um, uh, we will do a podcast kind of covering all of the players, including the defenders. Uh, how about your observations here, Connor? Yeah, Jamaica has a bit of a mix of of um, European-based players, a, a small number of them, and then most of their other players are based um, kind of in North America, including some domestically. Um, and they there is kind of a large um, Jamaican you know, population or those with Jamaican heritage in, in England, they seem to kind of try and pull some of those guys into the national setup. Um, Bobby De Cordova reed and Andre Gray being two of the more high-profile ones recently to do that. Um, yeah, looking at scores over the, uh, over kind of their recent competitive matches, um, Corey Burke, Darren Maddox, Shamar Nicholson, um, Bobby Reed, a couple names that, uh, that pop up. Um, with kind of a handful of goals, but it, it seems to be that they're searching for their, their main striker. They haven't really settled on someone yet. Would you agree with that? Uh, yeah, I would. I mean, I kind of had it in my head that Darren Mattox was the, the main guy, but then he didn't play in the 2021 Gold Cup, uh, which doesn't necessarily mean that much because a lot of teams didn't send their uh, top players, but I found uh, Shamar Nicholson a little bit wasteful uh, with his opportunities. And uh, over the years, they seem to have been searching for kind of the the, the starting forward. And um, I don't think Nicholson, for me, is the guy. But then I think that the range of forwards in this uh, uh, number of players we see in this graphic here uh, kind of suggests that they have been searching. 
and still haven't really settled on one. Yeah, they have some some talented players on on good teams. Leon Bailey being another one. None of them have a an amazing rec, goal scoring record for Jamaica. Um, so they've kind of brought some guys in, and and I wouldn't say anyone's kind of, you know, run away or done enough to maybe stake down that starting position. So I think the search continues. But on the other hand, they do have a number of players that that do get goals for them. They kind of share out their goals a little bit more. Um, so that's that's a good thing to have in the team. But they um, they'll need someone you think that to rely on if they are to pick up points against some of the the tougher teams in the Oka. Yeah, that's right. I think Leon Bailey is probably their most uh, high-profile player, but he hasn't really taken off for Jamaica uh, yet. Uh, they'll be looking for good things from him in this qualification. Okay, we'll move on to the next part of the podcast, which is uh, kind of the uh, prospects of the team. Uh, starting with their, their ranking, how are they sitting in CONCACAF and in the world? According to FIFA, they're 50th in the world, um, which put, ranks them fourth among CONCACAF teams. Um, and then according to ELO, they're 64th, so a little bit lower, and that has them ranked sixth um, among CONCACAF teams. Um, so kind of middle of the pack, we tend to find ELO... Um, a little bit more accurate, and I would suggest that sixth place in the region is is more reflective than than fourth, even though they've done well in the in in the gold cups um, over the past couple of years. Yeah, um, fourth uh, would would suggest that they they would get the intercontinental playoff spot, and and uh, that hasn't really been the case. They would basically have to have a pretty good year uh, to justify uh, fourth place. Yeah. Yeah, over the past five years, they've kind of hovered consistently around those where they are now, uh, around 50th in, in FIFA and a bit lower, kind of in the 60s um, in ELO rankings, um, which marks a little bit of a rise from from the years prior to that, again, based on the, the strong performances um, in the Gold Cups of 2015 and 2017. Yeah. Okay, well, let's take a look at uh, how they uh, stand in the uh, head-to-head or compared to each of the other teams. So we'll begin with Canada. Uh, They have a record, a a better record than Canada, four wins, three draws, and three losses. So that's that's pretty even on the whole. Uh, But they have won in two of their most recent meetings. So the 2015 Gold Cup group stage and the 2017 Gold Cup quarterfinal, uh, they won both of those and, in fact, have one of their last, uh, won their last three meetings with Canada. So... Um, they'll be hoping to keep that uh, going. Uh, it looks quite the opposite with Costa Rica, where they have just one win, five ties, and 12 losses over their history. Um, two of those five ties, though, came recently in the 2015 Gold Cup group stage and in 2018 World Cup qualifying, where they tied at home. But they've lost the last uh, two, including in the recent Cup, 2021 Gold Cup, uh, where they lost uh, one nothing in the group stage. Unsurprisingly, that that home or that lone win against Costa Rica came in the run up of their 1998 World Cup uh, in the final qualifying round. Theirs. Oh yes, yes, that's right. Sorry, I, I got mixed up there, but that's right. That's their lone win. Uh, uh, when it comes to El Salvador, they have a winning record. So it's uh, six wins, four draws, and three losses. Uh, But recently, they've been winning over El Salvador again. That 2015 Gold Cup was a great run. They're getting a lot of their wins there, and they did against El Salvador in the group stage. In the 2017 Gold Cup group stage, though, they tied, as they did in the 2019 uh, Gold Cup group stage. So... Um, recently, those two are pretty even. And in fact, uh, El Salvador has won, or oh, sorry, Jamaica has won uh, every time from 2006 with El Salvador's wins coming in the deeper past. Okay, moving on to uh, Jamaica. Honduras. Sorry, <laughs> thank you. Honduras, it's uh, five wins, three draws, and eight losses to them. But in recent times, they've been quite even. Uh, They tied away in 2014 World Cup qualifying. Uh, Sorry, they tied at home but lost away. 
But in the 2019 uh, Gold Cup group stage, they won uh, 2-1. So, oh, well, what am I talking about? They won 3-2. So Jamaica winning the last uh, meeting there, but a losing overall record. Uh, kind of similar with uh, Mexico. Uh, they only have three wins and three draws compared to 17 losses. But uh, in recent times, uh, they have... They're, they beat them in the 2017 Gold Cup semi-final, as well as tying them in the group stage of that tournament. And uh, they lost in, in a couple of games before that. Uh, so generally losing to Mexico, but a pretty good recent record. Okay, if we take a look at Panama, uh, it's actually Panama who has the better record. Jamaica has two wins, five draws, and three losses. So it's very even. Uh, in 2014 World Cup qualifying, they tied home and away. And in 2018 World Cup qualifying, where Panama reached the World Cup, uh, Jamaica lost both games to them. And their most recent meeting was in the 2019 Gold Cup quarterfinal. Uh, which Jamaica won. Okay, moving on to the USA. Uh, they have a record of two wins, six draws, and 11 losses. Uh, they last beat the USA in the 2015 Gold Cup semifinal. Uh, is that right? Because I thought they lost to USA in the final there. I will double check while you carry on. Okay, we'll uh, overlook that one or come back to that one. In the 2017 Gold Cup final, though, they did lose 2-1. Uh, and in the semifinal in 2019, they also lost 2-1. And then recently in the quarterfinal of the 2021 Gold Cup, they lost 1-0. So um, they can't be expecting to get much off uh, America unless they play them at home where they... They often get draws against them. Uh, did we sort that one out, Connor? Yeah, so Jamaica did beat the United States in the semifinal and lost to Mexico in the final. Oh, okay. Then earlier in the podcast, I said they lost to USA both times, but uh, apparently not. Okay, and that brings us to the end of the kind of uh, analysis of their history. So we'll just talk about it a little bit now. How do you see things shaping up for Jamaica? I see Jamaica as one of the teams that maybe has an outside shot at um, at reaching probably the, the fourth place intercontinental playoff at best. I don't see them as a top three team in the region, and I think top four of a region is a bit of a stretch, despite what the FIFA rankings uh, may suggest. Um, the head-to-head -head shows that they have got some good results against many of these teams in recent, uh, in recent results. But those tended to be one-off games on neutral ground. I think they'll have a tougher time um, over the course of 14 games and having to go into Costa Rica, Honduras, Mexico and try and get a result. Uh, yeah, I expect them to be pretty strong at home. Um, and um, what was I thinking? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of a little hard to judge because they did so well. Uh, in those two Gold Cups and have done pretty well in the Gold Cup since. And yet in 2018, they failed to reach the semi-final round and were pretty unconvincing in 2014. So you do get some teams uh, that are better, say, at the regional level than at the world level or vice versa. I wonder if that's true of Jamaica. Yeah, it may be that their, their recent success in the Gold Cup uh, may not be reflected um, as it hasn't been in recent times in World Cup qualifying, but it's it's also a little bit difficult to assess them. They haven't played a lot of competitive games over recent years because they haven't had to qualify. So the Gold Cup was their best, was kind of their best, uh, the best opportunity to play some competitive games. Um, and there they they lost to both Costa Rica and Mexico, two, you know, a couple teams. Certainly Costa Rica, I would say, a team that they'd really have to finish above if they were to have any hope of. Um, making it to the World Cup. Yeah, I kind of got the feeling in, in the last two World uh, Gold Cups that they, they, you know, have quite a bit of talent but aren't necessarily firing on all cylinders or maybe necessarily gelling as a team. I mean, the fact that Leon Bailey is not, you know, uh, all he was hoped to be 
and uh, other players, uh, the inability to find a forward, for example. Uh, I think they need to find that formula, even if they're going to get to to fourth place here. Yeah, I think they certainly have some some good results in them, but I would agree they haven't probably got the best out of the squad of players available to them. Um, and I don't know whether they can maintain a consistent campaign over 14 games. I think they're capable of good results, but I don't see them putting together a, a campaign that really has them challenging for that uh, fourth place spot. Okay, but you seem to be dodging the real issue, Connor. So give it to me straight. Can they take fourth place or are they going to be in the bottom half of the table? They will be in the bottom half. I think they'll finish third bottom, which would be six out of eight. I see them as being a bit of a better team than than Panama and El Salvador. Um, a weak campaign could keep could see them sucked into the bottom two. Strong campaign, they would maybe finish kind of fifth, but I don't see them getting fourth, and I see them being a few points behind it. I don't think it'll come down to the final games. Um, I think they'll be uh, a few points off the pace um, with a sixth place finish uh, where I'm going to put them. Right. Uh, I got to agree with you. I think that tough start will be a bit discouraging to them. And then um, they, I mean, if they really find the right formula, I think they could take fourth place, but they, for me, haven't been able to do it yet. So I, I wouldn't kind of bet on them being able to do it, but uh, I do think they have the talent to to uh, take fourth place uh, with a good campaign. But I also am going to put them as sixth. I think they're stronger than uh, Panama and El Salvador and uh, possibly fifth. But uh, I think fourth, as you say, is a bit of a stretch. Yeah, I see them maybe winning three or four of their 14 games and then picking up a couple ties. But I, I think they'll be in tough and what will be a very competitive uh, qualification group. Yeah, me too. We didn't really talk about their away record, but uh, I think they will be tough at home, but I think their vulnerability will be uh, in their away games. Okay, well, uh, unless you have more to add. No, that's it. Um, that uh, sums it up for Jamaica. Um, and yeah, thanks again, and I will see you in the next one. You betcha, and we will see you next time. We will be looking at Jamaican players as well as continue our, continuing our team-by-team -team, uh, look at the qualifying teams. Thank you for listening. Bye. Bye-bye.